Detroit has peaked in 1633. And in this insane gone wrong social experiment where one player simulates civilization in this decrepit metropolitan, I shall be surviving 86 million quectoseconds in Detroit. And after the past three episodes in this series in No Me Factory, I am nearing day 75. But what has happened so far? This mod pack is based around recreating the realistic industrial revolution, which I have carried out most successfully in my dedicated territory, to chase the ever receding goal of becoming wealthier, and face the industrial consequences. The most recent development being the creation of computer parts and the invention of chemistry to recreate sulfuric acid and polyethylene aka plastic. With this I am getting closer to the third stage of gaming, colloquially known as high voltage. So today I will be doing all that is necessary to complete the rather humorous final tasks that are required for obtaining the moderately expensive high voltage technology, to get 5% further in winning this monstrosity. I would also evolve from using primitive chests to using the far superior matter energy storage system. And by the end, we shall see if I can complete the rather difficult keystone trials, to obtain the legendary glitch equipment, which will either allow me to fly, or result in my painful death at the hands of not gaming. All of this shall be attempted by the end of this episodic audio-visual presentation, as I reach day 100 of playing in this world. But before that, there were a few serious socio-economic issues to address in the base. The first problem was that the thing that is needed for smelting anything, aka the blast furnace, was pushing the energy cables to the verge of exploding whenever it turned on. Meaning I needed a power grid upgrade. The far more tragic problem is I am slightly running out of resources due to everything becoming more expensive. On top of all these predicaments there was the major inconvenience that this base is extremely unorganized. So here is the plan. These blue glowing boxes from Deep Mob Learning were basically imaginary mob farm simulations that produced ridiculous amounts of material dropped by imaginary entities. And I could obtain more of these blue glowing boxes to farm more types of resources at once, which included farming zombies for infinite iron, the most used industrial resource. And when this practically infinite iron is combined with interminable carbon from inestimable diamonds from earlier, I basically had immeasurable steel. And when this is combined with tremendous obsidian from this gaming trick known as breaking obsidian instantaneously by breaking stone next to it with a mining hammer, I could smelt semi-infinite dark steel. With all the dark steel boxes I could now make even more blue glowing boxes to hold simulations for spiders, guardians, and blah 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 for copper, blah blah blah, and so on. So with a stash of plastic and aluminum from earlier, and new metal bars, I could create more medium voltage machines. Previously, creating medium voltage technology usually resulted in pain and suffering due to the object known as circuits. But with the scrumptious plastic, making the required machine circuits was less vigorous. And rather than making circuit boards the expensive silver way, I could simply do it the even more expensive chemistry way. You may have remembered the mine coins that I only mentioned once two weeks ago. By arranging them in an upside down Conway glider quantum header row structure, I could technically buy salt. And after taking this salt and sulfuric acid made in episode 3, I reacted them for a reaction of sodium bisulfite and hydrochloric acid. But not a soul troubles about the sodium bisulfite. The hydrochloric acid was then assorted with crushed iron to create iron but Roman numeral 3 and also chloride. Realistically this is used for drinking water production. But here, it will be spent to create advanced circuit boards. Which is sufficient for 20 medium voltage circuits. This would then be used to proceed towards the next industrial task. Upgrading the power system. I created new machinery known as two new medium battery buffers and eight new mediumly fat batteries. This would be used to create two new medium voltage power grids. One of them would be used for general purpose medium voltage machinery, and one of them would be dedicated to the blast furnace, to make sure history did not repeat itself with cable overloading. The plan is to eventually completely destroy this low voltage machine neighborhood due to the fact that medium machines can do everything twice as fast, and can do new tasks that were previously impossible. Basically being better and superior. This included the advanced assembling machine. 
which was strong enough to make this blue spaghetti, which can be injected along with electronic parts to create the medium voltage energy acceptor. This will be used to upgrade multi-block machines to medium voltage as well, which is 2% more complicated. I deconstructed the blast furnace and reconstructed it in the medium voltage neighborhood. I then surgically removed the basic acceptors and appended the new medium voltage acceptors, which quadrupled the blast furnace's possible energy consumption, which is good. Because I will need 10,000 EU European unit energy per second to fabricate the stainless steel for high voltage machine hulls. But before that, the plan was to continue organizing the base to make something more suitable to handle the logistical and realistic factory requirements for the future. Previously the base was split into unorganized area and unorganized area. But now it would be split into automatic manufacturing such as plastic, manual processing for stuff I needed on demand, the blast furnace area simply because that is actually needed, the ore processing area simply because that is actually needed, and the matter energy system, which I will explain in indeterminate quantities of time. The machines that I would be manually using were all collected and reorganized into the same area, leaving behind the machines that were running automatically, and the low voltage machines that were no longer being used, would be thrown into this arc furnace to be sacrificed into juicy raw materials even though I had infinite materials, leading to me having more than infinite materials, aka infinite materials. The next thing to do was to annihilate the chests that were fogging up the base. This included this chest that contained primordial dark ashes, ashes and small ashes that were created from using the primitive blast furnace approximately 1000 bacteria years ago. As it turns out these ashes could be capitalized by separating them into various fancy sounding materials, but dumping them was more economic because it saved time. And time is money. Which is why it is called currency. Anyways, before I destroyed the rest of these chests, I decided I would first unlock the matter energy system, which is the ultimate storage system, which I shall demonstrate after actually obtaining it. This would require several arbitrary resources. First up is 4 blocks of overly dramatically smelted vanadium steel. The next step is to engrave them into these white waffles, which needs 4 different colorful lenses. And these lenses were easy to make in the new advanced lathe which I made earlier but did not tell anyone until now, which replaced the low voltage lathe, which was predictably sacrificed. While that was happening I used more dark steel to create this coffee machine, which could turn quartz into quartz but shiny and electricity. When this shiny object is thrown into water with redstone and more quartz, it undergoes an exothermic chemical reaction and becomes purple and identifies as a fluix crystal, which is injected with other materials to create the matter energy energy acceptor. Meaning there were now three different types of energy I had to handle now. Redstone flux from the generator donut, realistic EU European Union, and now, a American Express units, created with the energy acceptor, and transferred using these purple cables which needed even more processing. But do not fear. Because over the past few semi-hours I had sacrificed most of the slow basic machines and created all of the main advanced machines, so processing anything would be approximately 1.9 times faster accounting for our Earth time dilation. All I had to do was first quartz and quartz and fluids crystals with sand to create the crystal seeds and create the crystal growth acceleration chamber to grow the seeds into pure crystals which are wire milled and alloys melted to create the purple cables to finally transfer energy next to create the red alloys and electrical alloys and other alloys and circuits and combine them all together to create some 1k storage drives and the computer drive and connected them all together with fluids crystals notable mention I made so many terminals and stuck it onto here. To create the device known as the matter energy system, which I will call the me system. How it works is that items could be put in this system terminal, which is stored as data in the storage drives. But the real advantage is this system comes with its own Google search engine to find any item that was needed. And this had a theoretical capacity of one gaming million amount of substances. So I could theoretically take everything stored in these chests and store them all in one place without any socio-economic consequences. I then rinse and repeat it for every chest, while leaving behind the useless materials, and demolishing the now deprecated chests. And to finish the cleanup of this compartment, I demolished the ancient primitive blast furnaces and the furnace row rights reserved trademark. The next section of the base to create was the ore processing area. Before this I had to relocate the misspelled sand sugar cane farm to make way. 
so I kidnapped the farm and reassembled it next to the plastic making area, which was the only practical use for the sugar cane. And now that I had enough space, I decided I was not actually going to create the ore processing area yet. Because I decided to go for high voltage technology first. With high voltage technology, normal processes will be accomplished four times as fast. And this speed is principally necessitated due to the massive amount of ores I had stored, which would take five stiliferous eras to process with current technology. But luckily, I already had everything I needed for high voltage circuits. The main difference with these new circuits is it needed electronic components known as engraved central processing units, and transistors, which I materialized from plastic. I also needed some metal parts such as blah blah blah. Now all I had to do was combine them all together in this assembler. I then stood here silently for what felt like the number 40 times 16 seconds to fabricate 16 high voltage circuits. If only it was that simple. You may remember how each tier of machinery has its own base material. The next tier, needed stainless steel. Here is how to attain it. I would first need chrome, which is best obtained by crushing and doing funny chemistry on rubies for now. I then mixed this chrome with a mix of iron, manganese, nickel, and chrome, to get the shiny white powder. Which also had to be blast smelted, consuming energy and harebrained amounts of time. If only there was a way to make the smelting easier. There was. Because by adding an inert gas into the system, the smelting will apparently smelt faster. And in this case, all I needed was nitrogen. And as some of you may know, the atmospheric composition on Earth is 70% nitrogen. But how exactly would I extract nitrogen from the very air? First I created an air collector to harvest the atmosphere, which was pumped into this advanced centrifuge to separate out free nitrogen to be dumped into the furnace, leading to an approximate efficiency increase of 30%. With that out of the way, I began smelting the stainless steel. In the meantime, I made some other critical medium voltage machines, such as the advanced circuit assembler, some advanced fluent extractors to melt metallic substances, and the outstandingly crucial extruding machine, which could turn bars of metal into any shape I desired, as long as I had a mold. All of these innovations led to the third wave of low voltage machine extinction and recyclination. And by now, low voltage had nearly gone extinct due to my anthropogenic activity. With the stainless steel, advanced machines, advanced circuits, and matter energy storage system, I had everything I needed to proceed into high voltage. I had accomplished everything I needed for today's gaming agenda. Except for one thing. The obtaination of the glitch armor, which would allow me to fly without usage of hacks. So I began with step 1 of the process. I had retrieved some apples from the deforestation in episode 1, and made some realistic diamond swords and realistic iron equipment, and poured myself a bottle of molten material. All of which will be used to kill mobs until they die, which is necessary. With these high voltage circuits, I created this kid's iPad, and made some blue keys. I then swooped down and assassinated these zombies, causing an electromagnetic reaction in which this iPad interacts with the something to attune these trial keys. Upon attempting to return to the base, I created the trial keystone, which I placed at the edge of the skyscraper. After doing the deep breathing zen techniques and doing the gamer finger stretches, I sacrificed the attuned key to the keystone, beginning the deep mob learning trials. Zombies and other unpleasant men phased into reality. But I did an evil laugh sound effect. Because I could effortlessly overthrow them by pouring lava without raising my diamond sword. But my overconfidence resulted in the downfall, because the system glitch arrived. The system glitches are entities that look like infamous YouTuber Frozy, which will drop this blue meatball upon its demise, which is needed for the glitch armor. But they also discharged black meatballs that no clip through reality and made me unhealthy. I had to escape. But the keystone detected my cowardice and I had failed the trials. The unfortunate byproduct is that infamous Frozy was still alive. Therefore I died. But this failure was only temporary. 
I manufactured a Euclidean regular quadrilateral shield, and repurposed the mob farm simulation chambers to create fish to be industriously cooked for a nutritious chow time, which will replace apples as the sustenance source. With this, I was ready to wage war with round two of the trials. But rather than being outsmarted, the zombies would outdumb me. Because the first zombie accidentally defenestrated himself off the roof. When I attempted to chase him down, I accidentally fell off the skyscraper as well, leading to yet another fail. As it turns out, fighting on the edge of the skyscraper was a terrible idea. Several attempts resulted in epic vine battles, which usually always ended in universal catastrophe. And some fights accidentally led to traversing into the lower floors, which were unfortunately plagued with skeletons. Each of these misidentifies led to me supposedly leaving the arena and disqualifying myself from attaining corporate rewards. But I kept attuning more and more trial keys for infinite attempts. After several failures and semi-successes aka failures, I was having the best run so far. That was until I slipped and fell off the edge. But I would not have it. Using the grappling hook made from god knows how long ago, I grappled onto the side and expertly saved myself out of pure frustration. But I ran straight into the skeleton communion of floor 6. After doing some risky maneuvers I managed to enclave myself. The plan was now to dig upwards back into I go by lots of names territory, but then, zombies on the surface were pulled downwards by gravitational force and onto me. But I somehow survived this ordeal after they were pushed off the edge. I then finished them off by deploying the lava waterfalls onto their heads and zero degree no scoping them without leaving the arena. After this was accomplished, I was rewarded even more blue meatballs. These meatballs can be left clicked onto obsidian to get the blue meatball dust, which undergoes a chemical reaction with gold and lapis to make these frozy themed ingots. And I had enough of them to forge the full glitch set. After donning it upon myself, I gained the ability to fly. I lifted myself into the atmosphere and began whizzing around at the speed of Minecraft player. By now I had gone a bit over 100 days in this simulation of realistic Detroit. But it did not matter. Or did it? You may have remembered the Walter White incident of the previous episode where I haphazardly created the automatic sulfuric acid and plastic production. I may have to go Walter White mode once again, in the next episode, where I shall be tackling the art of extracting all possible materials out of a single type of ore, and recreating Amazon in Minecraft. So stay tuned. And shout out to all the channel members who joined in the past.